Why did Scotland have such a distinct clan system and how did it evolve? Furthermore, why is it that Scotland had such a distinct clan system, whereas England, just over the border, didn't to any great degree? The word clan means children or family in Gaelic, and clan chiefs were almost as powerful as kings in their local areas at various points down through history. Clans bound people together with a shared sense of identity and ancestry, and we still see this today, although in a much less formal way. Very quickly, what clan do you belong to and have you got any clan connections in your family history? Please let me know in the comments below. To give you a rough sense of time scales, the Scottish clan system seemed to emerge around the 11th or the 12th century, perhaps earlier um, but it seems to have emerged in a more formal way around this time. And it lasts until the 18th and 19th century, with the Battle of Culloden in the 18th century and the Highland Clearances into the 19th century essentially being the final nails in the clan coffin. The Scottish clan system was like its own little mini Game of Thrones at various points down through history. Clan chiefs, who were the head of the community, essentially made most of the important decisions. Clan chiefs would also use marriage strategically, using it for their own ends. To forge an alliance with a neighbouring clan, for instance, not unlike how royalty eh, would operate down through the centuries as well. Contrary to popular opinion, not everyone of the same clan with the same clan surname were directly related. Many were, many were family members, were cousins etc, um, but some would just adopt the clan name um, for protection to show solidarity with the wider clan. A nobility emerged around clan chiefs, and people would often pay taxes or some form of duty to the clan. Clan members would fight and farm for the clan, and bards would tell stories of the origins and the great heroes of the clan. Many clans claimed descent from either kings or Irish mythology. Clan McNeil, for instance, claimed descent from one of the High Kings of Ireland, Niall of the Nine Hostages. Conflict and border disputes between clans was quite common, usually over cattle. Clans were also often distinguished from badges in their bonnets. The McDonalds wore a sprig of heather, whereas the Macintoshes wore holly. Now that we know a little about the Scottish clan system, why did it develop in such a prominent and notable way in Scotland? Well, in a land where there was numerous invasions from the likes of the Vikings, the English and many others over the centuries, it's easy to see why being part of a strong clan was appealing to many. On top of this, Scotland isn't really known for having the nicest weather. If you were alone and isolated, you were not only easier to be picked off by an invading force, you would be in dire straits if your crop failed or a family member fell ill and couldn't work the field. So one reason why the Scottish clan system evolved and was very appealing for many was for a very practical reason – safety in numbers. The reality was that being part of a clan dramatically increased your chance of survival. Now some of you may be saying that a clan isn't that unusual, as essentially it is a tribal group. So what separates Scottish clans from just basic tribal organisation that we see in every country around the world? Well there is a massive feudal component to Scottish clans. During the wars of independence in the 13th and 14th centuries, feudal tenures to regulate land holding were introduced. Robert the Bruce used a ward of charters as levers to help control clans and incentivise their support. Land was often granted to clans by the Scottish Crown that were supportive of the cause of national independence in the face of English advancement. Thus, one crucial feature that separates the Scottish clan system from many other tribal systems around the world is that Scottish clans were often endorsed by the Scottish Crown and supported by law and this only helped to reinforce um, more of the practical benefits of being part of a clan and also the shared sense of identity and ancestry. It was law and the crown that really helped to cement the Scottish clan system in the legal and political organisation of the country. This is by far not the only reason, however, why Scotland developed such a distinct clan system. Scotland is a country that has a history of turmoil and political instability unlike many other places. An ideal environment 
for local chiefs and warlords to rise. If we look at the Wars of Independence, for instance, outside of a brief couple of years um, of relative peace in the middle, the Wars of Independence lasted from 1296 until 1357, essentially 60 years of instability and war. No wonder that people looked for local protection and local association as opposed to looking for some sort of national identification and protection um, in a country that had constant political instability and the threat of the government being destroyed by a foreign power. Furthermore, given the mountainous landscape in the north of Scotland, the Highlands was a difficult land for any monarch or centralised government to control. With only primitive communications technology, the difficulty of controlling a land of such topography probably fed into Scotland having a more decentralised local clan system. I am a keen hill walker for instance, and often when I'm climbing hills in central Scotland, once I get to the top of the hill and I look north, look out over the highlands, I immediately get the sense of how intimidating it must have been for ancient powers, whether the Romans, um, whether a central government in Edinburgh um, or in London. The, their ambition to try and control this landscape um, must have been quite daunting when you actually got there and you looked across this topography. Communication lines, supply lines, various other practical elements of controlling um, and invading such a land was so much more complicated by the topography of the land, the weather of the land, um, and the people of the land to a degree. So it definitely makes sense that there was local um, associations and local communities that had such a strong bond. Add on to this that Scotland has numerous isles, both off its western coast and the likes of Orkney and Shetland, which weren't absorbed into Scotland until the 15th century and perhaps a little less relevant. But there are numerous western isles um, off the coast of Scotland. The reality is that the geography of Scotland doesn't lend itself as easily to centralised government as, say, England which is a more uniform geographical land. If you were sitting on your golden throne in Edinburgh or London in, say, the 15th century, how could you effectively control what was happening on the Isle of Skye? How long would it take to send a message there? If a rebellion broke out in the Highlands or one of the islands, how long would it take until you even heard the news? Would it be days, even weeks? Obviously the Crown and the central government did conquer the Isles and did conquer um, many different parts and there was rebellions back and forth over the centuries. But the geography of Scotland probably lent itself more to a more localised system. A clan system probably evolved in Scotland partly due to its geography. Yet another reason why Scotland has such a distinct clan system is that Scotland is a country that is made up of various peoples. You have the Gales to the Western Argyll, the Britons of Strathclyde, those of Pictish descent to the North, the Islanders who were influenced by the Norse, the influence of the Angles around the Lothian area, and then also the Norman influence. So you essentially had numerous peoples with different heritages who faced different challenges on a daily basis, and therefore sought kinship with those around them. The Armstrong clan of the border area had to deal with the constant threat of English invasions through the land over the border, whereas the, the McLeods of Sky had to deal with very different challenges on a daily basis. So it makes sense that there was local association and local community, um, that again that was strengthened by the, the legal and political um, development of Scotland as a country. So the reality is that there's so many factors that went into Scotland developing such a distinct and notable clan system. From invasions to geography, shared identities to feudal tenures, various people of different heritages sought safety in numbers and those local associations were often reinforced by the Scottish Crown. It was not all plain sailing however, and there were numerous clashes between the clans and the crown over the centuries, particularly as the centuries progressed. And obviously the clan system was eventually destroyed, um, but that will be the subject of a future video. If you would like to learn more about the Scottish clan system and your clan origins, please click here. For ways to support, the will be in the description below, and thanks to everyone who does support this work. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.